I, I want to speak about um, a remedy that is made from the decay radiation uh, of, of positronium. Positronium is, a, is, a, is, is used in, in, in medical uh, uh, science, it's by the technologists. Uh, uh, PET scans stands for positronium emission tomography and is a very accurate way of looking at structure. Um, it's quite expensive and therefore used only in very specific situations like brain scans for instance. Um, it, uh, it came to me in a way that I think is a story worth telling. Uh, a student who was uh, a, a PhD uh, physicist in an American University, San Diego University, um, studying homeopathy via the, the correspondence course and therefore I met him at one of our, our sem seminars in, in uh, San Diego and he, he came up to me like a man who might sell you Rolex watches, you know, would you like one of these? Uh, he said, uh, would you be interested in proving antimatter? And I said, you're joking. And he said, no, I'm not. And uh, proceeded to tell me what he actually had in mind. What he actually had in mind was the decay, decay radiation of positronium. It's a, it has a particular spectral light. Uh, and it was something he was set up to produce. Um, in, in his case, he, he, his source was, uh, was, were, were electrons from uh, a, a cyclotron generator um, because he had the equipment. Uh, and that's why he wasn't joking. Positronium is a very, you might say, primitive uh, particle. It's only just a particle. It consists of two electrons, an electron in positive, uh, with positive energy, an electron with a negative energy. Uh, you could call one a, posit a positron and the other a negatron, but negatrons are called electrons. So it's an anti-electron, and that an electron and an anti-electron can orbit one another a bit like an electron might orbit a proton, as in hydrogen, is remarkable. It's not very stable. Uh, the, the two uh, collapse one upon the other as the energy runs out, as it does quite rapidly, and they totally annihilate one another. That is to say, the two electrons disappear. Um, of course, nothing actually disappears, it transmutes, and it transmutes into uh, a photon with a particular wavelength, uh, a particular spectral energy. And that's what impinged the water in a glass bottle. That was the substance that we ran up into the proving potency. Therefore, it's an imponderable, a name given to a class of remedies which are created from energy rather than from matter, like homeopathic x-ray, homeopathic sunlight, um, homeopathic uh, gamma rays, uh, or homeopathic magnetism, uh, all examples of energies that have been put into a bottle and processed in pharmacy. This will, of course, stretch the skeptic's imagination uh, to breaking point and they will part company from us uh, in respect of this for sure. So for those who are not skeptics do continue listening and for those who are you can just have a laugh. Um, it, it, it is postulated by, um, by physicists that right at the beginning, um, at the big bang moment, uh, that um, positronium was uh, the first created uh, material out of the energy, you know, massive energy and then all the forms and one of the first forms was positronium. In the beginning everything is created in its plus and minus energy form. Every plus has a minus to go with it and to accompany it just as, uh, just as charge, you know, electric, electronegative and electropositive charge match each other, or as in the energy of a magnet, the North Pole matches and contrasts with the South Pole. They're equal opposites. They attract, the opposites attract, and the same's repel is a universal law in material science. So 
our first pair of opposites, one could say, with a pair of equal and opposite electrons and positrons. Therefore, we would expect that the universe would contain as much negative energy as positive, that it would contain as much matter as antimatter. And strangely, it doesn't. We, we live in a universe that is composed primarily of matter with a minority amount of antimatter. When the two meet, they transmute. There's a big bang and a lot of energy is released. Um, why there should be an inequality between the two is something that's not known, but it is clear that a very small inequality at the beginning would give rise to a very large inequality at the end because of just just because of magnification. So antimatter and anti electrons and positronium is something that we don't get to see on the planet very much and its existence is very short and it represents a complete annihilation of its opposite. That is the theme of positronium actually. It's the annihilation of the equal opposite into pff, dust. Well actually energy. And this gives us, in a sense, three forms. There is the matter form, the antimatter form, and the pure energy form. So it's like a, a triumvirate, a three of forces. The positronium individual, the person who needs it, might indeed experience the light. And the experience of the light might be very important for them. In other words, they might be very spiritual seeker kind of person. But equally possible uh, and at the same time, not necessarily opposite, it could, they could, could exist at the same time, will be a deep fascination with material and the deepest, most ancient form of material. Could be something like a fascination in archaeology, or old bones, or just history, or just shamanism, you know, in the sense of ancestors. Any of these things could be there. And also they could be the possibility of the new, the arising, the energy that is right in the now. So you can see that in some ways it's, it, it's got a lot of, of, uh, of correspondence with the situation in which we find ourselves right now in the 21st century. And also the idea of annihilation, which came out very, very clearly in the first prover, who was the woman in Helios Pharmacy who ran up the positronium that we gave her into the potencies that we used for the provings. She was our first prover, unwitting prover. It, the remedy came to her without a name because I was really clear about not letting anybody know what this was. So it just was called, Helios called it Misha's Mystery and this is what she worked with. And it affected her profoundly and she wrote the first comments. She said something, it's, you know, I feel like being being the one who is hunted, being the one who's hunted down, mercilessly hunted down, being underground somewhere with your limbs tied down, with, your, with a weight, a huge weight pushing down on you. And there is nothing that you can do to overcome this malefic force that will kill you, crush you, destroy you. And I got that report before we did the proving and I thought, oh my God, do I really want to do this? And of course, you have to, don't you? Anything that has that power is going to be important as a remedy. As they say, the greatest poisons make the greatest healers. So we, we went ahead and did the proving and it was a, a very amazing experience with these key ideas. In it, you can find all the detail um, easily. It's all on the, on the web. As, uh, just, just Google positronium homeopathy and it will come up. So I won't say more now but to have given this story seems kind of good. And it gives the idea of the doctrine of signatures quite clearly.